It's time now for a little debate. Obviously, Donald Trump has been dominating headlines over the last few days for his insanely racist attack against four women of color in the US government. But is this all just a distraction? That was sort of the point that AOC and other members of the squad made during their press conference yesterday. We are joined now by Brett Ehrlich. Is this all just a distraction? What a weird framing. Like the reason to call it okay, just- we'll frame it however you want. Right, 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 but just a distraction. Mm. Like that term itself feels like a distraction because a distraction from what? Mm. And I think, I think that during that press conference, the squad, which I am having called them now, uh, the squad. I'm fine with it. They, a, they like it some. I like it. They did a really good job of essentially saying we are calling this a distraction and we're using this opportunity of you guys cutting to us to outline our vision for America, yeah. which is something that has been lacking from the establishment with, of the party. Yeah. So Nancy Pelosi has, for all of the, the angling that she's done and the ways that she's kind of censured unofficially the behavior of these women, uh, she hasn't offered an alternative in terms of like a well articulated yeah. vision for the party and that's her job. So that's what they tried to do yesterday when they put together that press conference. And I think in calling it a distraction, you're doing something with this moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, and and you worded that right. It's you have to have the vision and you have to articulate it well. You have to have both of those things. Mm -hmm. And even if Nancy Pelosi was on our side on the biggest issues, I don't. I wouldn't want her to be the one trying to deliver on it because she can't communicate mm -hmm. those values in the same way that AOC and others can. Um, I think it's fine for like I, I to some extent disagree that it's. That, that, that talking about it is a distraction, whether we want to use the word just or not. I mean, obviously, the way that they handled that press conference is the way that they've done everything. It's issues focused, here's our agenda, here's what we're gonna do, and differentiating themselves from Donald Trump on the most substantive of grounds. And that's one of the things that I respect most about them. But Donald Trump is an insane racist and he's the president and I despise him. And I don't know if it's a great weakness of mine or great strength, but I want to wage this war on what is real, what is true, and you know uh, some of the awful people that are leading us. And so I feel like I had to respond to it this morning. Yeah, I mean, we then turned to other issues, and you know we talked about Eric Garner, we talked about Sudan, we talked about James Bond, the three biggest issues in the news, obviously. Um, but I do, I, I agree with the point that there are other issues that he doesn't want us to talk about. And so I tried to every once in a while I try to like touch base with reality by just not referencing the news, just. What are the important things that we could be forgetting about? And so I just quickly wrote down, his tax plan totally didn't deliver, was a complete waste of trillions of dollars and didn't stimulate the economy. He's working with MBS despite the fact that he hacked apart a journalist. He wants a war with Iran, almost brought us to one just a couple of weeks ago and is probably going to resume that very soon. He has shredded environmental regulations, doing nothing about climate change and just to give a big speech about how awesome he is on an issue that he doesn't even accept exists. Pre-existing conditions, he wants to get rid of them. He's supposedly gonna have a healthcare plan that's a couple weeks away, he's been saying that for literally years. Epstein, what is the connection with Donald Trump? We don't know, but he definitely doesn't want us to. The concentration camps continue. They have not in any way been fixed in the past couple of days. North Korea, there's been no progress there, even though he wants you to believe it's a massive success of diplomacy. He has no positive agenda for America, which they of course differentiate themselves against very well. And he and Mitch McConnell are blocking literally anything to protect our elections from foreign interference. That's just stuff that I just wrote down. How so there, there are a lot of issues. Uh, I did it in like the 45 seconds before the show started. Gotcha. The last one took a second. Um, I, yes, I don't think you have to choose something here. I think mm -hmm. what, in terms of like, is it a detraction thing, something else? You do have to choose your uh, stance on it rhetorically. Mm -hmm. And I think that every, I mean, look at what, every time Trump does something like this, these tweets were the worst. Mm -hmm. They were the worst. Uh, because he's now a president, so it wasn't quite, they're sending rapists, they're, send, they're murderers. That was before he was president. Now he is president, and him saying go back to your country when they are absolutely American citizens is insanity. Yeah. And it's wildly racist, and I think what he does in that is he's gonna normalize this as fast as he can. Mm -hmm. And CNN was doing that work for him this morning when Mark Meadows gets out and holds a press conference. And during that press conference, Meadows says, "Oh, he's not racist. These women have said terrible things about Israel. So what he does is he kind of wedges that door of racism open a little further 
by saying something worse than he's ever said and mm. letting it be normalized in a second. And now he's also established that conversation about, all right, let's compare terrible statements. Yeah. The only problem is if you're on the left, you, you, ha you have this instinct to ground yourself in reality and people on the right just wanna say stuff that they wanna say. So when he says, let's compare terrible things these people have said about Israel, then Mark Meadows is referencing something that doesn't exist yeah. Yeah. or is wildly mischaracterized. So the question is what time do you have to spend? Do you have to spend time right setting the record straight? Because who does that affect? And I would say, unfortunately, by what I said about CNN, it has affected mainstream mm. media coverage of things. Yeah. And that's a problem. Trump saying terrible stuff to his base who is not gonna change anyway, that's not the problem. But Trump and Meadows working together and CNN allowing them to kind of determine what this narrative is in a way that does not at every step of the way point out the ridiculousness of what Trump and his cronies mm -hmm. are trying to set as the record, that is a problem that we need to address. Yeah, it, super fast, I just wanna tag on to the end. Uh, two things that happened this morning, sort of related. Uh, so Kellyanne Conway being asked questions outside of the White House, uh, a reporter asked her a question and she asks him his ethnicity. Seems sort of weird to do like the day or two after this. Trump did this with Seems a Mexican weird. judge. Yep, he, he, he did. And, and this uh, is a problem. Just everyone needs to remember along the way that until every, like only racist, terrible people yell, go back where you came from. Mm -hmm. No non racist, non terrible mm -hmm. person has ever gone. Go back to your country, like that's it's a horrible thing. Happened. And until people on the right break their silence and condemn that action, or at least call it what it is, which is racism, everything they're saying is patently ridiculous and yeah. should not be trusted because well, they're they're calling something that is racist not racist. Even if they say xenophobic, which I. I'm not, I don't hate people that are different, I'm afraid of them. Mm -hmm. Which paints themselves as snowflakes, by the way. That's a pho phobia means fear, mm -hmm. you're scared of it. And xeno means outside. So you're afraid of things that are outside you. Those things outside <laughs> you are not your same color, you're racist. Mm -hmm. So you're pretty clear on this. Okay, so I wish the New York Times would take the same tack that you did. Uh, the other thing, by the way, super quick, and sometimes I don't know if I'm crazy, Kelly Conway was on the news, I don't know which one, one of the news is, um, and she said that uh, the squad is the dark underbelly of America. Which like- They're not I, even coding am it am anymore. Am I crazy? I know that's an expression, but like, did she just randomly choose that? I wanna, they, she knows she's doing it, she's uh, the worst. Those folks are the worst. Uh, I just wanna leave with this. The way that people on the right and in the media treat the word racist, and I told you this, but like they treat racist, like as soon as you say it, they wanna treat you like their customer service and you just use the F word. Mm -hmm. Now they don't have to deal with you. Oh, He said racist, this conversation is over, you're calling me racist, that's evil. Why can't I treat people being racist like I'm the customer service rep and they just dropped the N word? Mm -hmm. And I can say sorry, this is above me, this is above me now. <laughs> uh, you can try. Unfortunately, uh, we sometimes have to interact with these people. There is no answer, is there's no reason why we can't do that. We just need to do it, be like moving on. You're racist, that was racist, conversation over. Check out the Damage Report podcast each day, wherever you get your podcasts, whether Pocket Casts or Stitcher or iTunes. You can join me as I give you the news and stories you want with a range of co-hosts and interview guests jumping in on the fun each day. Again, that's the Damage Report, wherever you get your podcasts. And if you get them at iTunes, don't forget to rate and review. Sometimes I'll read them live on the show.